Good evening. As 2006 draws to a close, we're going to take a very different look back at the news events that have made headlines in the last year. It's been a year in which traditional TV news has found a rival in the shape of you, the public. The rise of the internet and digital technology and mobile phone cameras has turned millions of people all around the world into so-called citizen journalists and their pictures have changed the way we view the stories that affect us all. What this sort of footage lacks in technical quality, it often makes up for in power and immediacy. And there's a huge appetite for these pictures. Along with websites like YouTube and Google Video, they're finding their way into the mainstream media. All the major news providers now have facilities allowing viewers to upload their images to share with millions of TV viewers. And this programme is no exception. Earlier in the year, we set up our own internet site and asked you for your pictures. And the response was huge and varied. In a year which saw Tony Blair's popularity plummet and David Cameron try to prove that he's the man for the big job, we bring you politics without the PR. I know I look a lot older. This year, politics found a new way to talk to voters. Conservative leader David Cameron joined the YouTube generation with his own video blog. This is the web Cameron, sorry. This is the opening piece. Today I'm going to be talking about clean politics and um, telling you about the announcement we're making later today. Uh, we're going to have These were some of the reactions posted on the net within hours. Oh, oh, hello. Uh, it's nice to see you here. Um, well, as you're here. Let me tell you about my three-point plan to clean up politics. Just check yourself into Dave's yard, bring your family, come in here, we'll all just upset you. It's the best way. And I can do this because I know it, because I can feel your pain, because I'm just like you. But right now, I'm going to wash up the porridge. In July, it was another war that made world headlines. The kidnap of two of its soldiers and attacks by Hezbollah led Israel to invade the radical group's strongholds in Lebanon. In the northern coastal resort of Kiryat Yam, brothers Avi and Rafi were trapped in their apartment block under attack from Hezbollah rockets. Despite the danger, Avi decided to stay away from the bomb shelter and filmed the whole thing from his window. The explosion in the sea happened something like 500 meters from us. Uh, it was frightening. I didn't thought too much. I just took the camera and uh, started filming from the window. I didn't know how much danger uh, I put myself and my brother, but uh, when the evening came, we saw the news and uh, we realized that eight people died in the train station. Uh, it was sad, and uh, we, we understand that uh, it's a real war out there. Rafi, if you hit the floor and hit the floor, it's exactly the same thing. And on the Lebanese border, one Israeli farmer witnessed the whole conflict unfold as his once peaceful small holding became a fully-fledged war zone. Farmer Eitan Oren captured it all on camera. Every 10 seconds, every 15 seconds, you hear a blast over there, just, just outside our home, our building. Uh, and the noise is impossible. At night time, when you're crawling to the bed and get, to get some sleep, then you can't get any sleep because, like I said, the artillery never stop, never stop for a second. By day, tanks rolled through the kibbutz and troops used Eitan's orchard as a base to fire shells into Lebanon. And soldiers returning from battle used the road that ran through his compound. I was trying to keep a little bit distance from the soldiers because uh, I didn't know if they would make it alive. So I was trying to not to have any friends, just short conversation, you guys okay, you need anything, 
Can I film you? And uh, that's it. Professional Sports Presentation is filmed from a very privileged perspective. It's part of a well-oiled machine that gives you coverage of a sports event from every angle. But there's nothing quite like being in a stadium with 50,000 other fans to really get the atmosphere. So, with first-hand footage, we're about to show you the view from the terraces. The biggest sports story of the year was the World Cup. Tens of thousands of England fans set off for matches all over Germany, from Berlin to Dusseldorf, joining fans of every nationality. The stadiums were packed. So huge outdoor screens were put up, some even floating on water. As for the action itself, the less said, the better. England's adventure ended with defeat to Portugal in the quarter-finals, leaving fans devastated. 